welcome everyone to the Greater Hudson Chamber's informational event with uh, we explore workforce resources with Albert High School Wilbur Palmer Career and Education Center. Um, I'm Brenda Collins, president of the Greater Hudson Chamber of Commerce. Uh, the chamber works to advocate, promote for both businesses and nonprofit organizations, provide resources and information and partners with many local agencies for the benefit of the business community and our businesses. Uh, through our collaboration with CTE, uh, we wanted to highlight how the high school can help current and future uh, workforce needs and inspire opportunities for both the businesses and the students. Um, Work-based learning is an essential component to prepare our young people for future careers and help our local employees, employers. So um, I want to in welcome Rich. He is the Career Development Coordinator over at uh, Palmer Career and Technical Education Center to share more information. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Um, as you heard from Brenda, my name is Rich Pive. I'm the Career Development Coordinator for the Hudson School District. So my office is actually at the Palmer Center. But I do a lot of different things throughout the district. Um, basically, the philosophy um, that I approach working with all the students, whether it's you know down at the elementary schools, middle school, or high school, is just try to get them to understand all the different opportunities that might be available to them, and understand themselves and how they might eventually fit into the work world. And so, based off of that, that's how everything happens. All the activities, events, and things that we do um, throughout the district. So. Uh, so Brenda asked me to come here this morning and talk to you a little bit about the Palmer Center and some of the things that we do um, and how we help kids prepare them for the future. Uh, as we were talking about this morning, you know, we are kind of like a hidden gem. We do not want to be a hidden gem. We want to be able to let people know like who we are, what we do, and how it benefits students uh, short term and long term. So, so I'm going to go through and talk a little bit about the Palmer Center because we just went through a multi-million dollar renovation. Um, and so we're finally kind of up and running. Um, and so they kind of finished the renovation about a little over a year ago. And so now we've got kind of everything in place. We can actually start doing some more programming things for the students. So I'm going to walk you through that a little bit. So what is CTE? So career and technical education is very different than your traditional kind of high school coursework. Um, and so everything we do on a very regular basis is try to update our curriculum, um, to kind of have it really be able to focus with the kids on what's happening out in the business world for whatever that industry might be. So it's very rigorous, it's very relevant, it's very 21st century. Um, every one of our programs has a program advisory committee attached to it, which encompasses former students, parents, a lot of industry partners that are connected or tied to that program. Um, because we want to hear from them about like what's the latest and greatest that's going on so we can update our curriculum and then send that down to the students um, and teach that to them. Um, everything that we do prepares students for the most high demand, high wage type of career paths. Um, so if it's not something that's relevant really to our region, it's probably not a program that we have. Um, and the Palmer Center is one of 26 centers that are around the state. Um, Milford has a center in our region. Nashua has a center in our region. Their um, center is divided between north and south. Um, and then if you were to go north, north of our region here, um, you'd have Pinkerton, their CT center as well, and then Manchester has the Manchester School of Technology. So, so the whole 26 is within New Hampshire? There are 26 within New Hampshire, yeah. As far north as Berlin and all the way out to Portsmouth and then out to Keene. So, um, and a lot of what we try to provide to students is give them a real world experience, whether it's in the classroom or out of the classroom. And I'll talk a little bit about that in, in a little bit. So why CTE? Um, I, think, I think career and technical education is for every kid. I really do. Um, and um, even if it's not a path that they think might be the right fit, it's probably an indirect path that might make a lot of sense for them. So like for example, we don't have anything like with criminal justice. Now there are certain centers that do have criminal justice, um, but I would say you know, taking a business pathway or even a marketing pathway might be a good fit for students. Um, maybe even with our health and human services, that might be a good pathway for a student who's looking to get into criminal justice. 
because um, I think as you had said before, before we started the meeting today, kids are still trying to figure out what the right path is. And so that's a lot of what my job is K through 12, right? It's a process, right? It's not like, oh, you go up to the career deli counter and you pull out a ticket and it says dental hygienist. Oh, this is it for the rest of my life. That's great. It's not how it works. Right? So kids need to process this stuff, right? They need to have a lot of explore, you know, exploration type of activities. And so CTE can you know, help with that. And we've had lots of students that would start a program and then realize this is not the right thing for me. And, but through that, they're finding out what the right path is, right? And then they'll jump into maybe a, a different program. So it's a great way for them to explore careers. Um, they can earn credits for college. Um, the majority of our programs have actually college credit tied to that program. Matter of fact, through our engineering program, just to give you an example, um, if kids go through the two years of that engineering program, they can actually get 16 college credits from New Hampshire Technical Institute. And then they can take those and bring those to NHDI, or they can bring them to any other institution really in the country. Um, and use them at, at bare minimum for electives if they want to get into a four-year program or whatever the case may be. Okay. Um, and so they you know, learn a lot of real-world skills and again, focuses on high-wage, high-demand type of occupations. So we have 13 different programs um, at the Palmer Center. Um, we have a, everything from accounting to welding and fabrication. A um, couple of notables um, that I'll point out a little bit later. For VetSci, we're the only program in the state of New Hampshire that um, uh, focuses on small and large animals, and that's because of the farm that's attached to the school. Um, heavy duty mechanics, um, we focus on large equipment, diesel. Um, that's the only program that does that. There's lots of other um, automotive programs around the state, uh, but we're the only one that focuses on heavy equipment and diesel. Um, and then Air Force JROTC, um, that's a program um, that only us and one other CT center in New Hampshire has um, as part of their um, current technical education programs. The other center is in Rochester. So I want to give you guys some shots of the CT center and the renovations that are in place. Um, so this is the lobby that's just outside of our culinary program. Um, over here on the right is the brand new um, entrance and facade to the building. Um, so the Palmer Center, let me just go back actually. So the Palmer Center is right here. So this is Alvern High School, okay? So this is the Palmer Center at Alvern High School. So we're very much detached, but you can actually see that the Palmer Center at this point is actually bigger than the high school mm. as far as footprint goes. Um, so this is a new parking lot here, and here you can see the farm. This is a new parking lot in the back that we have for our students, uh, because we actually have eight um, sending schools um, that come to the Palmer Center. So probably about 40 to 50% of the student body um, at the Palmer Center at any given time is uh, Hudson students, um, and then the other 40 to 50% make up the other area or eight area schools. So as I mentioned before, there's 26 CTE campuses, um, and the whole purpose of all of those campuses is really to serve the entire state of New Hampshire. And so it's kind of a, like a really nice privilege to be able to have this in our backyard type of thing, um, because you know other schools, whether it be Merrimack or Litchfield or Pelham or Goffstown or wherever they might be coming from, they've got to travel to our campus, whereas our students just simply have to walk down the hall, which is really cool. All right, so a couple other photos um, of some of our renovations. This is our new studio for our digital media program. So it's not a video production program per se, a TV broadcast program. Um, it's more focused on um, uh, Adobe software. So the first year of the program, the kids get a lot of like instruction on everything from Illustrator to uh, Photoshop. And then the second year, they start going into the studio. So this is where they focus on maybe short um, videos that might be posted online. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had Penichuk Water come in and some of our students helped them with some safety training videos that they have for their employees. And they are able to do some of that out of our studio. On the right is the, uh, looking down at our um, welding and fabrication shop. 
out along the outside, um, those are 16 welding booths. And then on the shop floor, um, a lot of fabrication equipment. We have a few mills, um, we have a few lays, and uh, out of the picture is a 130 ton um, press brake that we use. Basically, if it's metal, it can be bent, cut, you know, rolled, anything, and we have the ability to do that. So it's about three quarters of a million dollars worth of equipment on that floor. So we've had um, some companies come through on a tour, and they're, you know, extremely jealous of what we have. Um, some of them don't even have the stuff that we have. Uh, a couple other photos. On the left is our marketing classroom. Um, so it's really cool with the stadium style seating. I have to say it's probably the most popular uh, classroom uh, on campus. And if you can see off into the background, you see those uh, computer monitors. So those are basically um, widescreen uh, television set up so that kids can plug in their laptops and in a collaborative pod, they can do like social media campaigns, marketing campaigns, that type of thing. Our kids just a couple days ago um, went down to Gillette Stadium for a project that they've been working on since September. Um, they get to choose uh, one of three different topics. I think they changed them up this year, but basically it's, you know, how do you market or how do you do a promotional campaign to increase ticket sales for the New England Revolution? How would you increase ticket sales for like the Patriots Hall of Fame? Or, you know, what should we do for Patriot Place, you know, that would appeal to the demographic age 14 to like 26 type of thing? And so they then put their marketing campaigns together. They then travel down to Gillette and they um, present to the Gillette staff. Um, I've actually gone That's down. Awesome. Yeah. It's very cool. It's awesome. So I didn't get to go this, this year, but um, I try to go every year. One, because I'm a Pats fan, but two, it's amazing to see what the kids come up with. Um, and they actually will take some of the ideas from the kids, which is really cool. Um, and, uh, but they get to go down and see Gillette. They get to walk on the field and everything and that type of deal. So it's, it's, it's kind of a... Again, it's a great academic thing for them to do, but it's also kind of a nice kind of, you know, reward for them for the hard work they were doing the last couple of months. On the right is um, the lab um, that we have um, for our uh, health and human services program. This is for the medical side. Um, and so this is set up just like um, a clinic or a hospital ward would be. And so the kids will be in that um, a lot, their second year of the program. Um, a lot, so that's where they gain a lot of their, their technical skills. So every program that we have has a classroom space and has a lab space. So for really, for marketing, the lab space is in the back. Um, and obviously their classroom is here. And while you can't see it over here, um, there's two classrooms, actually three classrooms now that we have for health and human services. Um, our stairwell kind of got redone and I like it because the aesthetically it's, it's awesome. It's kind of the centerpiece of the center, um, that helps divide, you know, um, and gives access to our first and second floor. Um, this is a shot down one of the hallways. You'll notice on the far right, that's our, um, outdoor, uh, garden center, um, that will have kids that will do, um, they'll go out and when the weather's good, have some classes out there. But, our natural resources kids actually um, help maintain that area. Um, and so the, it's set up as a three season garden area for them. So, And they had to do a lot of erosion control. Um, you can imagine over this past summer with all the rain that we've had. Yeah. Um, so we have a counting program. Um, students get, get three college credits from Southern New Hampshire University. Um, it's great for anybody for business majors um, and uh, students are eligible for paid, unpaid, credit-bearing internships. So we have a lot of kids that will come out. Um, sometimes they'll take this, like, accounting one their first year, accounting two their, um, their second year as a junior, and then as a senior, they'll take entrepreneurship, or we can put them out in the field um, as an intern. About 80% of our interns right now are, are paid opportunities for them. When I first started this, doing this many, many moons ago, um, I'd say maybe only 40% of high school students got a paid internship, uh, so. Air Force JROTC, probably the, the biggest thing I can tell you about um, these program, this program is the fact that it is not a military program. It's sponsored by the military, but it's not a military program. Um, they do drill work and they do calisthenics and PT and stuff like that, but it's more about character building 
Um, it's more about leadership um, than anything else. Only about 25% of our kids that take this program actually go into the military. The other 75% go off and you know choose a different career path. Um, because it's Air Force, um, we have um, some aerospace and aeronautic uh, type of curriculum that's embedded in it. So we have um, a flight simulator as part of the program. Students can come out and get uh, drone certified. It's called an A107 pilot license, and it's actually a drone certification that the kids can get. Um, they can also get ground school certifi certification as part of this too. So um, it's an awesome program. Um, Colonel Cheatham leads the program. He's actually our current New Hampshire Teacher of the Year. Um, he got awarded that last year. Um, and so he's actually excited that that was last year and not this year because he didn't realize like how much traveling around this country you do as New Hampshire Teacher of the Year. Um, so he's very excited to be back with the kids. Um, so, but it's an awesome program. Um, Hudson freshmen can get into this right away. Um, area school students, they do have to wait until their sophomore year. And that's mostly because if you're from ascending school going to a CT center, um, you have to have a year of high school under your belt if you're being sent to a center. So, yeah. Didn't you guys just have a huge thing happening just the other day, uh, a couple months ago, where the Air Force and like the Army and everybody were actually at Hills? That was STEM Day. So that was STEM Day. STEM day so, I yeah. So I helped put that on. So um, we had a Black Hawk helicopter come in from the New Hampshire Army National Guard. Um, so that was part of the STEM day. We also had Portsmouth Naval Shipyard there. Um, we had the Hudson Fire Department there. Um, we also had Army, if you've never heard of them. Um, it's Army with an I. That's Dean Kamen's uh, newest venture. He, they're doing a piece currently, I think, on Channel 9, MUR. Um, maybe check that out. They came down, and what they do is regenerative medicine. So basically, they're actually like 3D printing like hearts and pancreases oh and livers God. for replacement for like yeah for patients that need that. So wow. it's his next it's his next biggest thing. So they came down, and so the whole day was focused on you know science, technology, engineering, and math oriented careers. And so we had all the high school students kind of come out and visit, and then we bust in the seventh graders um, to do that as well. Yeah, it was really cool because I drove by. I was driving by and I saw it. I was like, what is going on here? My, yeah. My, my, uh, my son was like, oh, we uh, did this today. I was like, oh, that's awesome. He was, he was so excited. When he, and he's in 10th grade. So he, cool. was like, so he was so excited to come home and talk about it. And Aww. how he got to go inside the plant, the chopper. and That's the whole purpose oh, of it. So that, you know, it's, you know, tangible experiences for kids that help them start thinking about, like, what's a good fit and what's not a good fit. And that's what it was all about. So I'm glad to hear that. Because yeah. uh, that was the whole intended purpose, you know. So, so we had like nine or ten different companies kind of represented, um, and the Black Hawk again was there to kind of represent. There's lots of great careers in the military, but there's a lot of technology that goes with it too, right? So, um, so yeah, that was awesome. Uh, that was probably the slowest that traffic had ever gone down 102 <laughs> <ever>. <laughs> that whole day. Um, so that was great. Um, yeah, we probably had five or six hundred kids out there um, just kind of checking everything out from everybody. It was a perfect weather day, so yes. thank God. Um, so a couple of uh, pictures of their space. This is a flight simulator. Um, this is a multi-purpose room, so they'll use this for like their drill work, calisthenics, but also when the weather's not so good, they'll set up a drone course so the kids can practice in there as well. Uh, we have a construction program. Um, so again, kind of looking down on the shop floor. Um, we always have or try to have something called an IRC attached to every program because we want kids to come out of those programs with some sort of certification that is very recognizable for that industry. So for construction, um, all the kids get OSHA 10 certified. Um, so that's the basic entry level um, certification um, that a lot of industries look to um, for people coming into the field is that OSHA safety certification. Couple of photos of our kids. Um, so they do a lot of shed work. Um, I think in the next month or two, they're actually gonna start work on a tiny home. Oh. So they have the platform and the welding and fabrication students have actually started to work on it. Um, and uh, so that's all ready to go. They've got two sheds that they're looking to finish up. Um, one of them is mine. Um, <laughs> so if you would like a shed, and we work in collaboration with Reed's Ferry, um, if you would like a shed, um, they do take orders, and they're custom built, and you only pay for the materials. 
because it's meant to be a learning platform for the kids. And they'll do all aspects. So they'll put windows in, they'll put doors in, uh, vinyl siding, do metal roofing, shingles, whatever you want to do. They'll wire it on the inside. Um, and so every single aspect of building you can put into a shed, just as you can, you know, a three-story home. Um, so, uh, so I know the kids are chomping at the bit for the tiny home because that's kind of like the next yeah, yeah. you know level up from a shed, right? Yeah, because they're doing uh, they're building walls right now, aren't they? Yes. Because my stepson is in that too. Oh, really? My sorry, my son is in that with stepson, but he's. He's actually came home. He's like, I just built another wall today. And I was like, oh. It was probably the one that I saw from my shed because I saw a wall up. I was all excited. So yeah, that was great. Uh, we have a computer science program. So first year again, a lot of foundational, basic stuff. Um, so they learn Python, C plus plus, Java, that type of thing. Um, and so this is a shot of the uh, the lab area. So um, a lot of people don't, don't realize this, but any kind of software development, there's a lot of storyboarding that happens. Mm -hmm. So of planning and kind of laying things out in a storyboard fashion, and that's what these students are doing. And so for second year, we go heavy into cybersecurity and some game design. And again, right, real world relevant type stuff. What's the hot market right now? Cybersecurity. So the kids learn cybersecurity that second year. And a couple of shots of uh, the classroom slash lab. So that's um, Nick Stolos. Um, we're very lucky to have him. Uh, he comes in the morning and teaches the computer science classes, but then he leaves to his other job, which is he's a chief technical officer for a company called Ad Magic. And basically what they do is they take board games and then they turn them into handheld mobile app games. So yeah, it's very cool. Uh, culinary arts, which we've talked about, um, is uh, a three-year program. Uh, all our programs are two to three years, depending on the program. But most of them are most of them are two. There's a few that we have three. Um, and so these are some of our students that were at the the MRE challenge from a couple of years ago. What that was is sponsored by um, the 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 army. And um, what they did was is that they gave the kids MREs. And they said, make something that's edible out of this thing. Um, and so they compete with, like, they competed with Salem and Pinkerton and that type of thing. Um, and then folks from uh, Tuscan Kitchen are judges. Mm. And so they're only given, like, X kind of ingredients. It's kind of like um, little chef shows. Yeah, yeah, that type of thing, you know. So um, the kids have a blast with that. And a couple of shots from our lab. So this is our restaurant, it's about 80 plus seats, um, doubles kind of as the kids' classroom. Hoping by January on Thursdays from 11 to 1, we'll be open for lunch. Oh, um, I'm waiting for that. <laughs> right, yeah, right, everybody is, you know. And again, it's at cost, right, because it's a training center. So as long as you go in and understand that, like, the kids are training, and so they might make their mistake or two or whatever, um, it's really a pretty good deal, for sure. Um, you know, nothing like getting like, you know, restaurant quality beef stroganoff for like four bucks, you know, that type right. of thing. Uh, this is the lab area here. So these are um, part of the renovation where there is these stations, um, sinks kind of split up each station. The chef can be at the front of the room kind of demonstrating things and the kids are back here in the lab kind of, uh, you know, learning the skills. Uh, we have a digital media program. I showed you one of those photos before from the studio. Um, again, this is kind of in the classroom, so this would be a first year type of, uh, um, type of student here um, where they're doing, doing a lot of stuff with Adobe Illustrator. They do some really cool projects um, just so they can learn the skills but also make it kind of student friendly too. So they'll do like things like movie posters and cereal boxes, how do you design it. So it's not just using the software but thinking about the process of designing, right? Um, so, and then like I said, second year they go into um, the studio. So here's the studio from a different angle. Um, and then this is the control room here and is actually an audio room. Um, so they can do recordings, you know, for any kind of like short vignettes or what have you. <clears throat> so engineering, um, like I said, um, it's, you know, you can get 16 college credits, which is basically a whole semester of college. Uh, so that's amazing. That is a two-year program, um, 
and uh, it's a project lead the way program. So we follow the project lead the way curriculum, and that's a curriculum um, that's a national type of curriculum. First year, again, a lot of foundational type stuff, and then um, second year at the beginning, they do a lot of mechanical engineering, mechanic uh, manufacturing engineering, that type of thing, and then they switch to more environmental, civil engineering, that type of thing. So the whole goal is try to introduce kids to what engineering is, and then let's share with you some disciplines. Um, I have a student that's coming out of that program um, who's very much interested in manufacturing engineering, so I'm putting him at a company over in Merrimack for a paid internship in the spring. Couple of shots of the engineering. Um, so this is the classroom, and this is from the outside looking into the innovation lab. Um, we have several 3D printers in there, um, laser engraver, CNC machines, um, robotic arms that are four axis um, that the kids can learn to work with. Um, we were in there just yesterday kind of doing uh, filming for a promotional video that we're hoping to do for the engineering program. Um, and the kids were in there doing all the demonstrations for all the footage for the promo video. It was great. Uh, that's a better shot of the, the engineering lab. You can kind of see the CNC machines over here. Um, we have a health and human services program. So we had a health science program. We've morphed it into health and human services. The reason being is that we had a lot of students that were very much interested in human services. And like most industries, they're hurting for people too. And so we wanted to make sure that we didn't, you know, um, do a disservice for any kid who wants to be like a social worker, who wants to be a counselor, um, who wants to be, you know, anything in that human service realm. So what happens is the first year, those students will get a lot of the basics, anatomy, physiology, medical terminology, a little bit of psychology. In the second year, they get to choose. You want to go the medical route or do you want to do more of the human services route? So again, this is kind of that lab for the medical services route. And again, kids can kind of get into anything. A lot of people thought it was, you know, or have the misperception that it's a nursing program. Couldn't be farther from the truth. We have students in here that want to go into, you know, be a pharmacist, that want to be internal medicine, that want to be you know, surgeons, that want to be physical therapists. All of that is fair game in this program. So again, a couple of shots um, in the classroom and then shot of the lab. Uh, marketing program, this is from last year. It's a photo I took last year of the kids presenting down at the Hall of Fame. Uh, again, two year program. Um, the second year of the program, students can come out with three college credits from Nashville Community College. And again, these are college credits that can be used at the community college or they can take with them. If they wanna to go to school at the University of Montana, they can take that transcript right with them, and while it may not be a direct rollover to that program at that school, they'll take them and usually use them as electives. And a couple of kids at the lab, at the collaboration pod. Um, heavy duty mechanics, like I mentioned, we're the only program in the state of New Hampshire that does heavy duty diesel mechanics. This is actually a shot that I took of one of my former students. Um, that's him doing an internship at the Hudson DPW. Um, and so students learn everything from the basics for any gas stuff and diesel equipment. Um, they will work on some vehicles every now and again, but for the most part, um, it's all heavy equipment. We just had Milton Cat give us a loaner um, of a backhoe for the kids to be able to work on the hydraulics and do maintenance on that. And they get OSHA 10 certified as part of their industry recognized credential. Couple of shots you can see, you know, we're talking like an engine that's coming out of a, you know, tractor trailer uh, vehicle. And again, some of the, looking down on the shop floor. Natural resources. So um, students who are interested in the environment, environmental science, um, great program for them. Um, they start off first year, kind of a lot of the basics, so similar to the health and human services I was describing. And then second year, they can go more into environmental science, um, the natural re resource piece, or the second year, they can do the forestry piece. Because um, um, some people know, not a lot of people do, um, we have a 100-acre forest that's kind of attached to um, the school property. Um, and so those forestry students will actually manage that 100 acres and they do everything a forestry technician would do. And some of those students are in Indianapolis, you know, competing through FFA this week. Um, 
computer-controlled greenhouse, um, which is very much state-of-the-art. Um, don't see it in this shot, but um, on, if we were to look the other way, um, at the other end of the building, uh, we actually have an aquaponics now set up um, where they're actually growing tilapia in a tank. Um, and that tank is then attached to a hydroponic system. And so basically the fish waste kind of gets carried through, through the hydroponic system. The plants grow there. All of that is then filtered and then cycled back into the aquaponics tank. So fish are probably about that big. I was just looking at them yesterday. Um, and so those fish will then be used in the restaurant. And then the plantings and the hydroponics, like the herbs and stuff, that'll also go into the restaurant. So it's a whole farm to table kind of piece. Yep, exactly. So veterinary science program, as I mentioned before, only large and small program in the state of New Hampshire. And that's because, you know, we are privileged to have the farm attached. So the kids actually go out and they work with the animals. Um, we have um, 40, 40 dairy cows, um, along with a couple of donkeys and chickens and everything else that we have. And the kids will actually go out and they'll do the work with the animals out there. And then we have some small animals inside. We have chinchillas and ferrets and things like that. The kids, they all take care of them. And when school breaks, the kids take them home. And they take care of them at home and they bring them back. So, and those kids are out in uh, Indianapolis this week too competing, so. So a couple of shots, so a couple of kids um, working on the farm, uh, working on the small animals. We do have a surgical suite, so we're hoping sooner than later um, we're going to have a couple of veterinarians come in um, and they will perform some small surgeries, you know, spaying, neutering, you know, maybe, you know, some sutures for, you know, maybe a dog comes in and, you know, has a cut or something, you know, that type of thing. Vaccinations, that type of deal. A couple of kids will be in here kind of working with the veterinarian, um, but then over in this corner is a closed circuit camera and that will actually feed right into the two classrooms that we have for that program. Welding and fabrication, again, this is another former student of mine. Um, he was in the welding program, we placed him at a company um, and um, he is still there, that is actually him at his internship working at that company. Um, and so we just went to visit and took a tour of that company, he's still there, this is his fourth year. So. Um, OSHA 10 certification um, as well, two-year program, um, and I, every single one of my students that comes out of that program, it's a paid internship, um, just because of the skill level they, they come out with. Companies are happy to, to pay the kids. Uh, looking down from the shop floor, uh, this is the classroom here, and then like I said, the shop floor down over here. It's the only program we have that actually has two levels. Um, the classroom is up high, and then the shop down on the floor. Um, so that's really it for our programs. I do want to mention that on Wednesday, January 31st, we have an open house. You're more than welcome to come. Um, it's from 5.30 to 7.30. Um, and you can visit all the programs, check out the whole space, um, talk with our students. Um, I have a group of students called CT Ambassadors. Um, it's a leadership group. Um, these are students who are nominated by their teachers. Um, for their passion for their program um, and their potential to be able to talk to others about their passion. And so I work with those, st those students, I meet with them monthly, um, and we do a lot of, for lack of a better term, dog and pony shows. So um, uh, yesterday, um, a lot of my kids went and toured, uh, gave tours to uh, Leadership New Hampshire, which is a group of 36 yeah. business people from around the, uh, around the country, around the state. Um, and so they gave tours to those folks um, next month, or actually no, this is November. So in a couple of weeks, we're going to Hollis Brookline because we have students that come in from Hollis Brookline and they're having a career fair. So they've invited us and so my students will run the career fair. I literally just show up, set everything up and then let the students talk um, and they do their thing because students want to talk to students. They don't really want to talk to me. Um, and I only get personally, I get it, you know. So. Um, so yeah, you can definitely come and talk um, with the teachers, the students, um, and tour the place. A couple of things I want to bring up specifically about what we're trying to do. So now that you know a little bit about what career technical education is, right, we're trying to prepare kids for the real world. So there are only so many things that I can do as a career development coordinator um, throughout the district. So we're always looking for guest speakers. 
So we're always looking for people to come in and talk about their own career path and how they got there. Students tend to, tend to look at themselves and say, I'm the only one. Knowing full well, we, they're not the only one, right? That we know that, right? Um, so sharing your own career path and how you got to where you're at and why you like doing what you do, that helps students give some perspective. And I can do that to a certain degree, but I really need industry partners to help me with that. I would love, I would love to. Actually, I would love to do that. That would, yeah, that would be great. Always looking for people. We're doing all sorts of different things. Um, job search skills. Again, I go and I teach a lot of job search skills because I'm very passionate about it because I feel like when high school students leave high school, they don't know how to navigate the, the working world, per se. They're used to um, you know, high school jobs, which I tell the kids all the time. You, know, you, you guys go through pulse interviews. And they're like, what's a pulse interview? I'm like, yeah, you know what happens. You walk in and they check your pulse, make sure you're breathing, and they say, when can you start? <laughs> you know, I, which is typical high school jobs. It was, it was pretty typical even when I had a high school job, right? But that's not how the real world works. You're going to get interviewed. You have to have resumes. And you're going to have to, you know, you might have to go back for a second interview. You know, that type of thing, right? And so I'm always trying to teach the kids how to do that. So we're looking at people to help out with that and present that stuff, mock interviews. We have a series that I started a couple of years ago down at the middle school. It's for seventh graders. It's called Explore Your Future. So every month we highlight an industry, and then um, we get folks to come into the gym, talk a little bit about their company, who they are, what they do, but then talk about all the awesome career options that are out there for them in that industry. And so the purpose being not to be able to get 247th graders to say, you know, oh, I'm all excited about manufacturing, so I'm going to run out and do manufacturing jobs. No, what we're trying to do is, if we can get maybe 5 to 10% of those kids, 15 kids, let's say, to light a spark for them, then great. Then 8th grade will be even better. Then when they get to a, the high school of ninth grade, they get to learn about all of our CTE programs. Or if we don't have a program that fits them, they can go to one of those other centers, whether it's Milford. Like, for example, they have biotechnology. So maybe there's a student that wants something in the medical field, but they want more lab stuff. That's where biotech kind of fits in. Or maybe they want cosmetology or something to that, you know, related to that. Then they can go to Nashville for that, right? So that's the beauty of that. Um, uh, let's see. Um, we typically have um, the Greater Hudson Career and Job Resources Fair. Um, I don't know if we're going to hold it this year because it's such a huge event, but I know every other year we're going to be doing that. We're always looking for local companies to participate in that. You might get a candidate or two out of there. That's possible. The real primary purpose of this is get kids to understand who is in their backyard. They really have no idea. And we try to get them to then also, here's what you need to do to interact with a professional, right? Because they're not used to that either. So, um, so that's what we do that. And then we're looking for this year to do an Albert High School training fair which is we're going to invite all the two-year uh, programs, any kind of um, training institution that offers a certificate or something of that nature. And then if there's any companies that have a formal training program, like an in-house apprenticeship, we'd like to have those folks to come in and talk about, one, who they are, and two, a little bit about that formal training program. And we're going to target juniors and seniors with that. Um, so this is a shot from our manufacturing day from last month um, with the seventh graders. And this is a shot from last year's job fair that we held. We actually did it at the Boys and Girls Club because we needed a bigger venue. Um, and we had 70 plus, I think, participants in that. Yeah, all together. Um, always looking for work-based learning opportunities, too. So um, we're always looking for kids, again, to help them figure out who they are and what their path is, to do informational interviews. Uh, sometimes they're in person, sometimes they're virtual. We'll put a kid in our conference room and we'll do a Zoom call and they'll be able to ask questions of somebody that they have interest. I just had a student out of a vet sci program who wants to do animal nutrition. And we were like, I don't know what to do with that. So, uh, so we did some research, found a professor from Tufts who actually teaches animal nutrition, but she also contracts with uh, like pet food companies, you know, as far as what is the right with the chemistry with that and that type of thing. So he sat and talked with her for an hour via conference call. Uh, he was all excited when he got out of it. He's like, that's giving me so, many, so much more direction now. This is awesome. This is great. So we'll do that. Job shadowing. Um, we'll send kids on site for half a day or a day um, to see what a job is like. And they literally just shadow somebody. 
This is what my typical day is like, you know, that type of thing. Do you see yourself fitting into this? Um, the most challenging one we've had so far, I get a young lady, she's awesome, she's amazing. She wants to be a windmill technician, turbine technician. Oh. No one, anybody, let me know. <laughs> um, I haven't been able to find anybody. Uh, did you know, like, all the windmills, at least in New Hampshire, are owned by a different country? No. I did. This yeah. year, found out just by trying to, like, track that. Yeah, so try to, like, go through, like, you know, a company in Canada to, like, see if you can get a kid a job shadow. Yeah, uh, yeah that's impossible. <laughs> um, so, but we found a technician um, who's willing to do an informational interview with her, so... Um, at least that. Internships, externships, um, we do work study cooperative education programs with companies. So for example, um, I just got approved uh, for one student who wants to do heavy duty equipment and excavation. Um, and that's typically something you can't hire for a 17 year old. Um, but based on Department of Labor law, you can get a waiver for a student coming out of a CTE program. So we. We, we just have to do the right paperwork and, you know, and, and make sure everybody knows that the student is still a student learner. They're not replacing, you know, a new hire or whatever, and we can have that student out in the field. Is um, it 21 that to operate heavy equipment? Or no, it's 18. It's oh, okay. 18, yeah. Okay. Uh, but most of our students don't turn 18 right. until, like, late spring, summer. Yeah. Um, so the students that, like, so this is a student that's coming out of our heavy-duty diesel mechanics program. Um, he really wants to be a heavy equipment operator, but this was the closest thing to get, which is fine because you're going to have to do maintenance on all that equipment anyways. So he's in the second year of his program. We've put him in a co-op work study um, with Simino Excavation, and he's doing amazing. And we were able to get a waiver for that company to be able to take him on as a 17-year-old. So, um, And then we're also, we have a job board. So for our students, um, we have a career center. Um, and at our career center, um, we're happy to post any kind of like just typical high school job type of stuff. We post them physically outside the career center. And then we also have something called Schoology, which goes out to all the students. It's an electronic kind of like messaging system. And we let students know like here's what we have, you know, for postings from local companies and that type of thing. So these are actually three slides that I stole from um, students' um, internships. So when we have students go out and do a formal internship, one of the things that's a requirement for them, they have to do a capstone presentation. Um, so this is a student that worked out of um, an accounting tax firm in Manchester. He was coming out of our accounting program. Um, this is a student that was coming out of a veterinary program. She was at All Pets um, in Nashua. And this student here um, was out of our um, Health and Human Services program, and she was doing dentistry. And so those, those are slides from their presentations, their capstone presentations. And that is it. Questions? Yes? You said your school was K through 12? So my position is K through 12. Okay. So I, like for example, um, I'm working with the school counselors down at Nottingham and Hills for their fifth graders. And we're doing a leadership uh, workshop um, on and again with leadership communication and getting along and teamwork which are wonderful career building skills right so I'm working with my CT ambassadors um, to go down with them to the hills and to go to Nottingham and they're going to deliver a lesson um, on leadership skills uh, because the fifth graders love talking to my kids and my kids love the fifth graders because <laughs> the fifth graders look up to them so it's yeah. perfect um, and just last year, I was out in Las Vegas, and I presented to a national audience about peer-to-peer -peer education. And so this is kind of the next evolution of that. Um, because again, peer-to-peer -peer education is very powerful, very powerful. So, so that's what we're doing with fifth grade. Middle school, you saw some of the things I do. We do some things with sixth graders to seventh graders, get this Explore Your Future series. So we highlight an industry every month. Um, and then eighth grade, they do a, we do a huge, big career day much more intense, a lot more comprehensive, in the hopes that kids have found a couple of things that they think they're interested in, and then we'll allow them to kind of do, get, get involved in a presentation from um, an industry partner that's connected to that field that they think they might have an interest in. So, um, so yeah, so that's, it's the K through 12. That's my piece. Uh, my office is at the Palmer Center um, that's connected to the high school. So. 
Any other questions? No, I love what you guys are doing. I just, Thank you. you know, it's my son. Um, I think he was just here last week. He's from Barry Dunn. Is it at CPA? Oh, okay. Talking to the, yeah, I don't know what he's oh, doing. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, well, he was one of the guest speakers, yes. I think. Yeah, yeah. he was talking to our personal finance students and to our accounting students. He, and he's yeah. from, the, the nice thing is he, you know, he didn't graduate from Algren, but he's from Hudson yep. all his life. So that I've seen such a difference in what's going on in the schools. I think you guys are doing a great job. Thank introducing you. welding like i have i'm a banker we're bankers <laughs> but, but we have like everybody i talk to they're looking for employees they everybody. can't find everybody. employees mm -hmm. so the welding that you brought back in and i i think that's fantastic just fantastic there's nice. so many employees that need people like, yeah absolutely I, I probably get a half a dozen emails and a day you know yeah a day and a half dozen phone calls a week yeah. from folks like, hey, we're wondering if we can somehow partner with you, that type of thing. Because, you know, we're, you know, I don't know if you know, but X industry is really desperate for talent. I'm like, I very much know that. You <laughs> yeah. know, it's, it's, it's yeah. universal across the board. It doesn't matter. Um, and we're happy to partner with, with anybody. Yeah. Um, the, the one thing I, I always look for with, you know, a company, an industry partner is if you're willing to work with us and make it a win-win, you know, it's going to work out great. Right. Unfortunately, I've had some companies that have kind of approached us and said, we really only want to use you as a division of our, of our recruiting department. And I'm like, that's kind of not what we're for. Mm -hmm. you know? um, we, want to, we want to have kids know who's out there, what's out there. They have opportunities. You guys have probably heard about the brain drain that's kind of happening in New Hampshire. Everybody thinks the grass is greener somewhere else. I don't believe so. I think the grass is very green here. Um, we just have to show kids that. Um, and like I said, I showed you that student that was welding, right? Uh, you know, yeah. and so the partnership is they come in, they help out with our Explore Your Future series. They come in and they help out by giving us a tour. They come in and help out with presenting. They, you know, all these things. And then if they're willing to take an intern and work with that intern and they know that, like, this is not a guarantee that this student's going to stay with us. But if we show who we are, what we do, what our culture is like, they might. And that's great. Mm -hmm. And so... That's what ends up happening. You have a student like that that's now going into their fourth year with them. That's awesome. so. yeah, it's really cool to see the fact that they're able to, to do all this before they even get to college. Right. Or if they decide they don't want to, like the game of life. Like the game of life, you can either go on your career path this way or that way, but the fact that you should, they can actually go out there in the working world and actually have their OSHA, their pro plan. Right, have that, have, they get that head start at the very least. So. Yeah, so a lot of our students, so students coming out of an engineering program go on to four-year degrees. Um, and some of them, you know, pretty high-profile, prestigious, you know, programs like Rensselaer Polytech. Um, we have students that go on to Tufts Medical School, you know. We have students that go on to uh, UMaine Arno for their pre-vet program, you know. That's, and then we have students that will, like my student that you saw, saw in that photo that was welding, you know. They took him on. He put in about 100 hours into his internship for the high school level. And again, it's high school, so it's not meant to be, you know, super intense. Uh, but they'll do that. And then, you know, if he stayed on, which he did, right, they said, we'll take that 100 hours and roll it over into our in-house apprenticeship, which, you know, he slowly but surely getting his associate's degree at Manchester Community College for, you know, advanced manufacturing. And so they're, and they're paying for it. So he's a student that's coming out. He's making like thirty dollars an hour now because he's certified as a you know stainless, stainless and European certifications too. So he's got all these certifications. He's making thirty dollars an hour at what's he twenty one, you know? And he's got he's got a degree practically paid for at this point. So can't beat that, yeah. you know. That's but that path is not right for every student. But it was for yeah. him, you know. And that's what we're trying to figure out is help students figure out what their path is. My only question is, I love that you guys are showing them the real world about, mm -hmm. um, you know, the different type of careers that they can take. Is, is there any effort also, and I don't know if I'm being fresh asking about this, but is there any effort that you also teach them a little bit about soft skills, ethics, you know? What is the effort that you guys um, are doing on so that? I think it's a challenge for everyone. Uh, it is. In the it world. Is. It, it, <laughs> right? So uh, it's embedded in every program, okay. you know, that they, they work on the soft skills. And when I write up an internship agreement, contract, or application, whatever it might be, however you want to call it, a lot of the competencies that I will put in there is to work on those professional skills. 
So it's a, it's a huge challenge for a lot of reasons, but one I can point out to you that is relevant because we're next week we're doing these job search presentations, is I hear from businesses all the time, like I have a kid that's kind of walking in, you know, for a high school job, and they're in slippers and pajamas. <laughs> right? And I'm like, yeah, I know. And so the problem is, is that kids are very black and white and very tangible. And so um, it, you don't, the abstract is tough until you get really older. Yeah. And so to be able to sit there and say, but that's not how the real world works. It's tough because they're like, well, wait a minute. I just walked into X business yeah. and they just got the job on the spot because they were, and, and they were wearing the slippers and they were wearing the pajamas. And I get it. Like companies are desperate for talent everywhere, yeah. you know? And some companies are like, okay, I'm going to lower the bar because I need to have somebody. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we see a lot with high school jobs is because it's a revolving door job, right? Mm -hmm. If that kid leaves now, today, tomorrow, I'm just going to do the same exact thing and I'm going to take that kid and plug it in there. And I know how that, and I know businesses are hard up for that. They, I think what happens or what is happening is that businesses don't understand that they give, they're doing themselves a disservice and really the kid a disservice too. Mm -hmm. Because what's happened is, is that you have no idea if that kid's going to stick around. So all of a sudden you start training that kid and working with that kid, mentoring with that kid, which costs you money, right? And they, they're not producing yet because you're still training them. And then a month later, the kid's out the door, right? You got to start over again. Yeah. So it's a vicious cycle where you're just kind of constantly, you know, losing money. And hope you get the right one. And you hope you get the right run, right? I'm going to turn around and throw a dart and let's, you know, and I get it. I understand everyone's kind of desperate, but I try to tell the kids, it's like, look, that might be what you're dealing with now. I'm gonna tell you right now, once you leave here and you attach not only your salary, but tuition reimbursement, but health insurance, paid time off. Remember, when you're being paid to take a week vacation, someone's gonna cover for you. So that costs money to the business too. So that's part of what I go in and talk to students about. And then the event that we're holding next week where we're gonna get into the nitty gritty about job search skills for those kids. Because this is part of the dem this part of the presentation I gave the kids last month. Now I want industry partners to come in and reinforce that by like, no, 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 no. We just don't hire anybody just because they have a pulse. We have to go through this process because everybody's desperate for talent, but that's the key word, is talent. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? We're all desperate for talent, but it's talent is the key word, right? Yeah. So it's it's teaching the kids that, you know, I think is 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 gotten harder. Since, you know, since COVID, I'll be honest with you. Yep, yeah. So, yeah. Thank you. So in February, I'm going up to Canada to do training for, uh, I'm going to become an ambassador for Alltech, which is a vinyl wrap mm -hmm. product. And it's a three-day training course. So that way I can become a training facility in, in this area. Well, not just area, but Boston area and everything. So I was wondering if there's a, when, when that's just happened, if I can help the school out in any way. I know you guys are doing more of like the other, like programs like the culinary and all that. But I don't know if anybody was into, you know, working with outer bodies of vehicles, inner bodies of vehicles. And Every so once so in a while we'll have a student that will take heavy duty mechanics um, because it's the closest thing that they have to something that's tied to it, right? So like, for example, I'll give you an instance. Um, there might be a student who um, would like to do like auto body, all right? Um, and that would be a program that they would go to Nashua for specifically, okay? Um, Nashua North or South, I'm not sure which. Um, but due to scheduling, you know, because kids often will have to take at least a chunk of time out of their schedule, so that has to be freed up for the transportation part, yeah. right? Again, like Ray showed before, right? Our Alvin students have it really lucky. They just walk down the hall, go to the class, right? If I have a student go to biotech in Milford or cosmetology in Nashua or whatever, they got to be bused there, right? So they may not do that because their schedule does not allow them to travel, you know, down to Nashville. So they might take heavy duty mechanics, diesel, um, because it's a, the closely, most closely related kind of program that ties to what their interests are. And we've had that, and I've had a student or two in the past that will do auto body, or maybe they just want to do straight automotive, and they can't go to the automotive program for scheduling purposes. And so I will put them, like, I think the last student I did that with was, um, they took on a Tully Buick um, as an intern their senior year. And I know at some point in time he, he was still there. I don't know if he's still there or not. But, but yeah, there's that occasion when that does happen. 
you know, that we'll have students do that. Like, um, we'll have a student, like I said, that might want to, you know, do something that is, um, you know, like construction management. But they'll take construction, you know, because it's closely tied to it, at least they can get the foundational basic skills type of thing. And I have a student now that's actually starting his internship on Wednesday at North Point um, in construction management. So he's not going to be, you know, throwing around a hammer and a saw. He's actually going to be working with the designers and general contractors and understanding blueprints and schematics and, you know, understanding suppliers and all that sort of stuff in the management piece because he's hoping to get his four-year degree in construction management. Amazing. You guys are Thank doing you. an amazing job. But to your point, too, I also pointed out, too, I don't know if you saw in the video, but um, where I had the marketing program. So part of the skill building with that is that the kids had to dress the part. Yeah. And so I can tell you, I didn't go on the, on the, on the trip on, was it Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday, because uh, our office was so short-staffed I couldn't go. Um, the kids that were getting on the bus as they were heading down to Gillette all looked awesome. Oh. They all look great. I'm like, no slippers and jammies here. <laughs> I was like, no, thank God. Yeah, they all look good. Some of the, some of the boys had ties. I'm like, oh, that's I know awesome. a kid that went, and he would normally wear sweats and, and you know, to, he's a football player. You know oh, yeah. I mean? yeah. Yeah. But it was it was great. He really enjoyed it. Oh, good. Yes. Good. Yeah, it's, and that's a, that's, you can't get more real world than that trip. Yeah. Because awesome. those are Gillette staff people, it. Patriot staff people that sit there yeah. <laughs> and review the pitches that the kids give and give feedback. And I mean, yeah, that's, that's awesome. yeah, it's yeah. awesome. So, well, great. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rich, for sharing this valuable asset. You're welcome. Community. I have cards here. And then um, I also have cards of my career center specialist, uh, okay. Laura Lockhart. She handles all the shadows and she will also like schedule presentations. Um, about certain career paths and stuff um, in the career center. Um, that was also part of the renovation is having a career center where we can kind of hold like presentations and um, mock interviews, things like that, that type of thing. So she's the one that kind of handles that. So. Are you still looking for anybody on that committee? Uh, yeah, actually. So talking about that whole win-win piece, um, we have a career and workforce development committee that meets usually like every other month. Um, we're looking for people who want to come in and just kind of give their input on some of the things that we're trying to do. Um, the committee's whole purpose is to try to tie together the local school community with the business community here in Hudson um, and, you know, get them to understand more about what we're trying to do, um, but also help us with, like, ideas and leads on some of the events that we do, whether it's a career fair, um, the training fair, um, or, you know, explore your future series or whatever the case may be. Um, we're looking for people to serve on that committee. And the more the better, because we know not everybody can make it. So we're like, if we have 20 people on the committee and only half can make it, well, that's a pretty full room. So, yeah. And it's painless. So it's painless. About an hour. One hour. He's got an agenda. It. He keeps on point. Yeah. It's, it's very focused. Yeah. And, um, very conscious of everybody's time. He's trying to work with the, the businesses and, and, and help inspire some opportunities for the students. Awesome. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.